Hello, I'm Bob Nudd. I'm here today on the broad meadow section of the urn in Enniskillen, County Fermanagh. And this is a section where, in 1977, Ian Heaps set the world record with 166 pounds, 11 and a half ounces of roach, which in those days was a massive weight of fish. The interesting thing about it was he caught them with a five meter glass fiber pole with the same length of line. Now this is called fishing to hand or, or fishing with same length of line. This is the technique I want to demonstrate today. But since then technology has moved on and we're now fishing with poles up to 11 meters, carbon poles, and we can use this same technique but we can get a much greater distance. The fish now are a lot shyer than they were in those days. You'd never catch them here now at five or six meters, no chance. So we've got to fish 10, 11 meters. And this is what I want to demonstrate today, just to go through this technique. As it happens today, we're very fortunate to have the wind on our backs, um, which uh, makes it easy for casting out. Not so good when you're coming back in with a small fish. As long as I'm bringing back a pound roach every time, it's okay, it will come to hand. But um, Anyway, let's just demonstrate this technique. Let's see, I've already been fishing for about an hour, so, and I've already caught some fish, so here goes, let's see if we can catch some more. Another fish on. Oh, we're in again. Another bream. Seems to be a lot of bream here today. Oh look, a beautiful fish. Probably about two pound. Look how easy this, this pole controls them. They can't go anywhere. It's a method, it's a bagging up method. Nice heavy flick tip. Fish straight in. And this is the most difficult part of fishing hand is when you've got to net a fish. Because you have to keep your pole down low. I'm lucky here that I've got the wall and I can drop my pole down into the water. Other times you might have to unship this first section here to land a fish, particularly if you're catching all bream. There's another lovely bream, straight in, nicely lip hooked, beautiful conditioned fish. As I said, this is a bagging up method when you're looking to catch 100 pound plus of fish. When um, we use this method in England, but not, not for catching a hundred pound, you can use, there's two venues that I use it a lot. One is a place called the River Wensum in Norwich. And there you're catching roach, small roach. And, and quite often you need 20, 25 pound of these small roach, but you need to catch them quickly and you're fishing off a high wall, uh, the Wensum runs through the actual city of Norwich and, and you're sitting on a high wall so it's very easy to fish to hand and you're fishing into fairly deep water and you need to fish quickly and uh, this, is, this is a very very good method for fishing there. There's not many places in England I, I should say where you can fish it but that's one of them and there you can catch as I said 20-25 pound of roach fishing to hand but you have to refine everything down uh, because you're only catching two ounce ropes, so no problem to swing to hand. Put another ball of ground bait in. Mustn't forget the ground bait. And um, you can use a much softer action pole and a much softer flick tip because there I have to use size 20 hooks. I can't use size 14. So therefore you need a much softer pole and a finer tip, otherwise you tear out of the fish. There's another venue as well, it's called um, Ten Mile Bank, which is where the Great Ooze comes out at Denver Sluice, just above there. And that's a, a deep venue, sort of something like 20, 25 foot. And again, you're fishing for small roach, well roach up to half a pound, but there's a big quantity of them. Anywhere where you're getting lots of bites very quickly, and presentation isn't that important. So when you're looking for speed fishing, you're not worried about presentation, then you can use this method of fishing. Another one on, this is good fishing, is known as the, now this, this time I'll be able to swing this one hand, it's not a big fish, 
to perch. Now this, I'll just show you this technique. When the fish is coming to hand, this technique of unhooking. As the fish comes in, catch it. Now you've got your pole up in the air. Swing your, your arm and hold, hold the pole with your forearm. So it leaves your right hand free to unhook the fish. So in fact, you're not really holding the pole. You're just supporting it there. Leaves your right hand free to unhook. Or I'm just to use my discorder on this one. To unhook. And then you're then ready. Your arm's there, flick up ready to cast out again, all the time looking for speed and efficiency. Now you've been watching me throw in this soft ball of ground bait. Oh, fish on. And I think we'll have a chat about it. Once I get this fish in, I think we'll have a chat about it because I'm throwing in very, very soft ground bait today, only fishing in shallow water or a nice bream. But definitely too big to lift straight out. But see how easy they come in. You've got a lot of control over the fish, you can just pull it straight in. This, this method is for big weights, plenty of fish. Well, that's a nice bream. Just about a pound, just over a pound, I should think. Right, let's have a chat about the ground bait. Now, the mix I'm using today is a mixture of river, Vandenine River, and brown breadcrumbs. This is a fairly soft mix. And you can see when I'm throwing it in, it's hitting the surface and breaking up and attracting the fish in. But it's a really, really, really soft mix. As you throw it, hits the surface and explodes and the bream will swim into this, it doesn't disturb them. If you're using ground bait, particularly here, it's not flying very hard. If I'm using ground bait that's too heavy, I'd scare the fish off. So what I'm aiming to do is to keep throwing in the cloud, keep drawing in the fish into the peg and just keep them feeding all day long. Watch your technique of casting, holding the pole between the legs, flicking the pole back, and out it goes. And then behind, a nice soft ball of ground bait. I think when we get this one in, it might be a good opportunity for us to have a look at the poles and the different sort of poles that we can use in this style of fishing. And look at that. Easily handled. They seem to be like peas in a pod, these bream today. They're all about a pound and a quarter. But lovely fish. Dark, funny, strange dark fish. Hardly touched the maggots and nicely lip hooked. It's a lovely fish. Let's have a look at this one first. Now this this pole is 11 metres. It's a spiral titanium, browning spiral titanium. In fact, it's it's about five years old, but it's very good for this style of fishing because it's really strong, very robust, and the action on an 11 meter, on this 11 meter pole, is, is this flexing. This is what you need to cast the float. If the pole doesn't flex, you can't cast out. If you look at some of the, uh, I've got other poles which uh, are incredibly stiff and incredibly light, but they're no good for this style of fishing. No good at all because you put so much pressure on the pole when you're casting that you would break it immediately. As you go to cast, it would just break. So you need a special type of pole. This is, as I say, this is the one I'm using today. I've also got a telescopic. I 
a 10 meter teles telescopic and this is even more flexible. This is the Italian style of fishing. This is a, a very, very soft pole, soft action. You can cast overhead with it. It's the, the more flex you've got in a pole, the lighter the float that you can flick out. And this one, 10 meters, I can probably cast a float of one and a half grams without any problem at all. It's, it's very flexes, very, very good. But because of the softer action, when you're catching large fish, they all need to be netted. You have to take much more care. But because it's a softer action pole, because it's a lighter one, I can use a smaller hook. I can use a hook of about a 16 or an 18 without pulling out of the fish. The stiffer the pole, the larger the hook you have to use. Going back down, even smaller, this is another type of pole. This is just a whip. It's a four meter whip but it's, once again it's used for fishing to hand. It's a stiff action up the middle with a very light flick tip and this is just another way of fishing to hand. The float you'd have on it, you can cast say four number 10s, four number 11 float quite easily and whip fishing really is, is defined by the fact that you fish it off your wrist. You fish the actual pole off your wrist and this design, this design means it's you, the same as you would use a whip. It's an overhead cast and probably you'd use this technique for anything up to say five meters. Anything over that you would cast either double-handed overhead or flicking out underarm as we'll show you later. Right, let's have a look at the end tackle that I'm going to use today. This is the one that I've already been catching with and as I mentioned earlier this, this pole is, is a fairly, fairly stiff pole, it's got a stiff tip, so I need to use a large hook. And I've got a size 14 hook, it's a silver hook, made by owner, very, very strong. It's quite light, quite light, but uh, I can, I'll be able to pick out sort of pound roach with it without any problem. I've got three droppers on there, three number six droppers. With, when you're fishing to hand, you have to keep everything very simple because of the casting technique. If you have too many shots spaced out, you find you're getting a lot of tangles. So I've, bolt, I've got my bolt shot with three droppers underneath there again. And the reason for this is if there's loads of fish about, I can pull those three droppers there. I can pull them down to there and see the bites much quicker and then tighten up on Olivet. Another thing you want to do is the distance between the hook and these first set of droppers always the distance to the Olivet, I'll flick that round there, needs to be greater. Always needs to be greater. This avoids tangles. Then we go up to the float. And this is also important. Try and keep the weight of the float down as much as possible. Never use a wire stem float for fishing to hand because what you've got to rely on is you're relying on the bulk of the weight for casting. You don't want any drag back on the float at all, so keep it as light as possible. This one's got a carbon stem, but the float itself is very light. The line is, is number 15. Once again, here there's plenty of fish. We're going to catch plenty of fish. We're using a five gram float, so I can use a fairly heavy line. 15 main line and 14 hook. Going back up to the tip, it's one that I've specially converted myself. And you can see it's really stiff. I can lift, with that, I can lift pound roach without any problem at all. In fact, just over pound fish. Anything, anything over pound and a quarter, then you need to net. But it's no problem for swinging fish to hand. And the fish keep coming. Because it's stiff, they come to the same place in your body every time you swing in. Right, let's see if the fish are still there. We've been catching plenty already, so they should be there. Oh. 
Um, behind us here we've got the Lakeland Forum, which is really the centrepiece of Fermanagh. And there you've got all the facilities, swimming pools, gymnasium. This is where the draw takes place for the big uh, P&O Classic. And all of these things, let's throw another ball out, mustn't forget that. All of these things are provided really by the, the local Fermanagh District Council. They're all part of the facilities that you can enjoy here. The actual county itself has got so much water. You've got here we're fishing the River Urn. You've got an upper lock, a lower lock, plus loads of different lakes and rivers and plenty of places to fish, plenty of places to catch fish. This is just one of many along here today. There, virtually every peg is taken. It's such a prolific stretch of water. Every peg's taken, plenty of people fishing. We're in again, another fish on. Oh, we've caught a roach. Yeah. This is another one. We'll just show you the technique of swinging the hand again. Straight in with these fish. An eight ounce roach, straight into hand. Beautiful conditioned fish. Watch, make sure you know how to unhook it. Arm round the pole. Leaves your hand free for the fish to go into the net. I mentioned briefly earlier the, the technique of casting, but let, let me show it to you in more detail because it's so important. What you've got to do is use your box as a fulcrum point. Rest your pole on your box. That takes most of the weight. And then right or left handed, I can do it both, but right hand, watch the length of your line. It needs to be something like two foot from the bottom of the pole to your hook length. If this is too long, it makes it difficult to cast and also difficult when you're swinging the fish in. Holding the pole with your right hand, bait in the left, and then when you go out, it's sort of a... As you go out, you swing up, you pull up with the right hand and you still the weight of the pole is on your box. So as you come up, you swing, using the pole, flick it, give it a slight flick, and it shoots out. It's Perhaps a little bit difficult when you first start, but after a few goes, a few trials, you get used to it. Now this method of, of long pole, long line fishing is really, it's developed for, it's not for presentation, it's, it's for immediate bites, you're looking as soon as the float goes out for it to go under because you've got a long length of line from your float to your tip and it's difficult to control it sometimes, particularly in windy conditions. Windy conditions when there's no flow, it's always difficult to control it. So, you need to be looking for fast bites. What it can do for you, of course, is, is give you the edge on distance because I'm now fishing something like, just missed a bite there, 11 metre pole with, with sort of 10 metres of line the swim's about three metres deep, so it, so it means it's something like 16 or 17 metres that we're fishing out. So it, it does give you an extra length that you couldn't obtain with a long pole, just long pole and short line. You can see it's a fair throw for the, for the ground bait. Let's have a look. It's, as I say, it's a technique where you're looking for bites very, very quickly. It's good. This method really was developed uh, in the early days, as I said, with Ian Heaps catching that, that massive weight of roach. Since then, we went to the ban, um, and, and there in the early 80s, it was fabulous roach fishing. Even then, we were only fishing six, seven, eight metres, and we've gone on. The fish have got more wary since then, there's not as many of them and we've had to go out further, we fish further to catch them. You can't catch them on, on the short range that you used to be able to, but the technique is still the same and it's, it's still easy to catch a hundred pound of fish. It's no problem to catch a hundred pound of fish as long as they're feeding.
make sure you keep putting soft balls of ground bait in. You can move the float, you can lift it, pull it, do things with it, but it's not quite the same control that you get if you are using a long pole. You've got to pull it in, lift it, move the bait, try and entice the fish to feed. Today we're looking to catch a mixture of bream and roach. In fact, this, this end of Broadmeadow, which is the high numbers, this is, this is peg 24, 25 and 26. They're, they're recognised bream pegs. This is what we're looking for today. I'm trying to entice the bream in close, get them in within in pole range so I can catch them quickly. And with a sprinkling of roach in with them. Just missed another bite then. So there's, there's a few fish here. I can see the float is bobbling up and down. With bream, sometimes they bang against the olivet and you can see the float lift up and drop down. Almost as if you're getting line bites on tip fishing. The same thing happens with pole fishing. The actual peg is about nine, ten foot deep, but virtually no flow on it whatsoever today. The, the river itself, sometimes it will run hard. Uh, other times it will be very steady and today the, there's no flow at all. It just depends what's happening in the lock gates down below. Keep moving the bait, try and entice the fish to feed. Can you see how I'm holding the pole? I've still got the pole between my legs, but then resting my arms on my knees, and there's absolutely no weight taken there at all. Just holding, I can hold it in one hand, I can strike with left while I'm throwing in the feed. I can hold the pole with my left hand, throw the feed in with my right, and I can even strike with left hand. Strike with the left or strike with the right. Just rest them on your knees, use your knees as your main support and you'll find that you can sit, fish all day, all fish on. Keep feeding the cloud, working your float all the time. If I get a fish on the drop now, it'll probably be a roach or a hybrid, and the fish on the bottom will be bream. The tackle I'm using today is, um, we've got a five, as I said, we've got a five gram float on here. It's well balanced, but positive. The float is very light, so it's following the olive. As I cast out, the float is following the Olivet, and that's important with all to hand fishing. Keep the float, make sure it's a, a cane stem or a carbon stem float, keep it as light as possible. Looks like another bite there now, I missed it. Flick the float straight back out. You don't need to come all the way in. If you miss a bite, if you strike and miss a bite, 
you can actually stop midway through the strike and just flick the float back. Saves you coming all the way in and picking up and casting out again. You may come in a metre or so, but it doesn't hurt because the fish are fluctuating, they're backwards and forwards. I'm moving the float now, trying to entice the fish. See, I just move the float, entice the fish, pull the bait off the bottom and I'm into one straight away. It's a perch this time. Nice size perch though. Come straight to hand. That's the advantage of this fishing to hand. Straight to hand. Remember what I said about unhooking arm around the pole. As usual with perch, they, even though that one took immediately, they always take it well down. Beautiful little fish. Right, before I go out again, let's just have a, have a chat about other floats that I use. Now, fishing to hand, you get you can start at two meters, a meter and a half, and you have all different size floats for different length poles. It just depends how far you've got to go out. The, the actual thickness of line that you're using is important. The, the finer the line that you can use, then the smaller the float you'll cast and the further distance that you go. But what you have to do is you have to balance it with actually what fish you're catching. If you're catching small fish, you can then get away with very, very fine, very, very fine lines. If you're catching big fish, then you have to use heavier lines and heavier floats. And this float here is a little papyrus float. It's ultra light in weight, cane stem. It's four number 12s, and it's suitable, say, for anything from three to five meters for overhead casting. Overhead casting with a whip, three to five meters, little tiny float, but very good for surface fishing with spaced space shots on it. Just shot spaced out so the bait falls through the water. This one here is one of my favorite Avon floats. It's a gram and a half. It's a, a very, very slim float, carbon stem, lightweight, once again, it's very, very good for fishing to hand because the actual float itself will follow the weight. It's got a tungsten olivet, will follow the tungsten olivet and be easy to cast. That's on a number 10 line. It's, it's so important to, to balance the tackle. The line that you're using and the float is, is critical to actually... If, say, if you tried to put a four pound line on this sort of float and you were trying to fish eight meters to hand, it wouldn't go anywhere. You just wouldn't be able to cast it and the wind would be towing it all around. So you, you've got to look at the diameter of line that you put into the size of the float and the distance you want to cast and the size of fish you're catching. It's not easy, it's, it's a matter of, really it's experience, a lot of experience. I mean, I've probably had 10 years at this type of fishing and, and as you go through it, you actually pick up little bits of information. You know what you can do and you know what you can't do. And here's one of my typical Irish floats. It's, this one is only three gram, but it's on a three pound line. I can cast this with a 10 meter pole. I've got these ranging from three grams up to 10 grams. There goes another one of the cruisers. There seems to be a lot about today, and they're very noisy. Beautiful, they all seem to come from the Manor House Marine. Beautiful boat. Lovely cruisers, but I think they're very, very expensive to hire. So this, this is, as I say, is a typical float that I would use here. It's, I'm using a five gram version of this today, but a very lightweight float, follows it. There's a tungsten olivet, follows a tungsten olivet. Easy to cast. This one is a, is a slightly larger version. It's nine grams. 
It's been handmade, actually. There's a lad importer down who makes these. If you see the shape of it, it's, it's getting to, to be almost round. It's, it's very, very good for fast-flowing waters. You can hold back with it, overshot it, hold it back. And it, but once again, a cane stem, an ultralight float for casting. That's on four-pound line, that one. Four-pound line, four-pound line, big hooks. I've got big droppers on here. It's a nine-gram float. You wouldn't be using number eight droppers on a nine-gram float. You have to, once again, we go back to this balanced tackle. If you're using a nine-gram float, nine-gram Olivet, so eight-gram Olivet, then you want big droppers to, to go along with it. It's going to be used in heavy, sort of fast-flowing water. So there's, there's big droppers on here to, to compensate for this. So that's a nice float, a really good float for fast-flowing waters. And this is just a, a smaller version of one that I showed you earlier. This is three quarters of a gram. It's a papyrus float, papyrus reed float, cane stem. Once again, going back to this, you want an ultra light float that then will follow out the Olivet or the, or, or the actual shot you're using. In fact, I used to use a lot of styles, but now I, I virtually don't use them at all. I, I find that the, they tend to tangle very easily. You can't get them off the line, so I, I tend to, to opt now for the very, very small, round, perfectly round shot. And it's legal to use any small shot in the UK, sort of, as long as it's not number nine or below. So that's what I use. Right, let's carry on with the fishing. I think I'll try this. I've got a small pole here. This 10 meter, it's, I say small pole, it's a light pole, a 10 meter. I've got a small hook on it, a number 16, but it's more of a fun pole. It's not, it's not really a, a crunching pole. So it's more of a fun pole, it's ultra light, but because I've got a 16 hook on, the other, the other pole I was using, this would tear out of it easily. Let's see if we can catch a fish on this. I think it'll be good fun. The advantage with this pole is that I can cast a gram float on it because it's so flexible I could cast on this 10 meters I could cast a gram and a quarter float I could cast it out the other one you'd have no chance but the action is still the same it's ultra light and you pull back but with this pole you would get more action because as you pull back you can see that tip coming down and then going out again so and it's easily flicked out straight out it's two gram float there two and a half gram float straight out without any problems. I wonder if we're going to get a bite on that. I suspect we will because it's got a smaller hook on it. And once again it all comes back to presentation. This is the sort of pole I would be using in England. Fishing in England, this is the type I'd be using. A telescopic with a very very soft action because I'd probably only be looking to catching two ounce, three ounce roach but it's perfect, it's ultra light. Look how I'm holding it, once again. You can hold it with one finger under the pole as long as you're resting your arms on your legs and let it run down your peg. So easy to fish. Also with this I've got a lighter line than I was using on the other one. So there's less problems with the wind. You can get away with a smaller float, you have to use a lighter line down the pole. Yeah, oh, I had one on then and missed it. Hooked it and lost it. Yes, it's worked. That lighter tackle has brought an immediate response from the fish. See the flex in the pole? Look at it bending. Taking all the pressure. It won't be as easy to get the fish in with this, but you'll still see how well it handles. It's a big bream, but you'll still see how well the pole will handle it. 
I've only got a small look on a 16. Take a little bit more time the other one, but it's a lovely feeling. You can feel the action all through the pole. Much better feel to the fishing when you're actually catching with something like this. Once again, you have to drop the pole down a little bit just to net the fish. In it comes, good size bream. Straight into the net, safely landed. They always seem to flick harder when they get in the net, I don't know why. That's another lovely fish, just lipped hooked. The maggots are not even, not even touched, just lipped hooked. A beautiful little bream. Well, it sounds like they're having a delivery at the Lakeland Forum. I can hear a van and a lot of noise. But, uh, these things you have to put up with. Sometimes it's lovely and peaceful here, like about midnight. At the moment, I'm still feeding this soft ground bait, trying to get these fish in. Fishing with this fun pole, as I'd call it, a nice soft action pole. English condition pole, but in Irish waters. I'm trying to work out to get these bream and to get the roach moving on to the feed. I'm fishing probably about an inch or two off bottom, and it's just started to run now, the river. There's a little bit, of, a little bit more run on it than there was earlier. And I think this is helping. I think the fish are coming into the feed it's drawing them. Whenever a river flows, you can, you can draw them into your peg much easier. It's always easier to line fish up once a river's flowing and it keeps flowing in a certain direction. Here, this is a strange sort of river. Sometimes it can stop and back up. Not many rivers flow backwards, but this one can. Don't ask me how they do it. Me and Kevin always argue about it, but, uh, but quite often it can flow back. But now it's just, it's just running off nicely and the fish are lining up and some good sport in store but it's mainly bream. I had a bite then and uh, just as I moved it. Always harder to actually move the bait the way that you want it to with this long pole. You can just sort of flick it one way but all the time you're moving the float in towards you, so you're limited in what you can do. You have to rely on the flow, the current, and the fish to keep things moving. We've got a lovely light line on there, another bite, yes, another fish. This is, this is a little perch, but on this pole it's got it bent right over. No, it isn't, it's a bream. Funny, I can't believe that, it felt just like a perch. But no, it's a, it's a bream. There, that hand, it's incredible. Even this pole with the flex, how it handles the fish. There it is, get the fish on the surface, get it sliding towards you, this is how to catch bream. Get their heads up, sliding towards you, and keep them coming. Keep them moving, once they're coming, once they're on the top, just keep them coming straight towards you. Keep their heads up, and you have no problem. Well, we seem to be lucky today. This swim is, is full of bream. The beautiful fish are about a pound. Very dark in colour, though. Unusually dark. But all about a pound. But beautiful eyes. Lovely texture fish. This is fabulous fishing. When you're going out and every cast the float's going, you're catching fish. You can see how efficient the method is. When there's plenty of fish about, you're bagging up, you just straight out in your peg again. Cast is the same, except it's much easier with this pole, much lighter. Now, when you, when you, with this pole, catching bream is okay because you're netting everything, but the problem I would have if I started to catch 
get a run of 12 ounce ropes, this pole would be useless, it's too soft, I would have to keep netting them. So if, if you get a run of big ropes, I'd have to go back to the other pole, where it's very, very easy to lift them to hand out of the water. This pole, you can't do it, it's just a little bit too soft. You could only look at lifting, say, three or four ounce fish at the most. It'd be all over the place, it'd be up and down. Almost like a trampoline effect. Float just dip then. Well, I'm in again. A strange fish. Oh, it's a tiny perch, I think. Yeah, a little tiny perch. Now this, this is the sort of fish that you can lift in with this pole, about a two or three ounce. That's no problem. Look at that. How did that get to find the feed when there's all those big bream out there? Something we haven't really spoken about is, is the actual ground baiting, in, initial ground baiting, how, how I actually start off or approach a match. It, it depends really, there's, there's so many different types of ground bait now. I think English anglers have never been very good at, at the continental style mixes. So what we do, what we tend to do, we buy continental ground bait. We import it from abroad. The French and the Belgians are very good at it. I happen to like Vandenine ground bait as a continental mix. It, um, it, it does a lot more than just normal brown crumb. It's a far heavier mix. You can pack a lot of feed into it. You can do all sorts of different things with it. But what, um, how I would initially start a competition Depending on, say if we were fishing with bloodworm, you need an initial bombardment of feed, a continental style bombardment of feed. You need something like perhaps 10 or 12 balls of ground bait in your swim, in a world championship match. So what I would do is, um, you feed initially with the ground bait, that's continental style with bloodworm. If you, if you take this sort of situation, it's, we're looking at a few bream, you don't want to scare the fish off, then I go for a much lighter texture ground bait. I'd probably put three or four soft balls in to start with and then just keep adding a soft ball every cast. It's just, depending on what swim you're fishing, you have to vary the weight of your ground bait, vary the style of feeding, what feed you're actually putting in it, whether it will be bloodworm and joker, or whether it be casters, what you're fishing for, just a variation. But it's, since, I think since we have started to use continental ground baits, our fishing has improved. Because there's no doubt about it, the continental anglers, the French, Belgians, Dutch, they do have a lot of knowledge on what actually goes in ground baits and what it needs to excite fish to feed. It's just something that English anglers have never had. We've always used brown crumb, or we used to use brown crumb, and that was it. If we needed to make it stiffer, we'd put a bit of white bread with it, and that would be it finished. But now we've advanced, we're using continental ground baits. These seem, definitely seem to have fish attractors in it, and they hold fish in your peg for a lot longer. You can do a lot more with them. You can make them softer, you can make them harder. Oh, another fish on. wonder what this is. Looks like my swim's been invaded by perch at the moment. Another little tiny perch. So going back onto ground baits, I, th I think with continental style of ground baits, the most important thing in the ingredients is the way that they stimulate fish, the way that they work under the water, they actually break up quickly, they don't just lie on the bottom in a lump. See, white crumb and brown crumb, it doesn't do very much. You throw it in the water and it just stays there. Perhaps it will break up slowly. 
Continental ground baits are very, very active. It's a little tiny boat going by with its motor on full revs. Continental ground baits are very, very active. When they're on the bottom, they're always working. There's always ingredients in there that are stimulating the fish into feeding. And you can see it's working successfully today. Another big fish now, bream this time. Can you see the action in that pole? Look at it. But it's killing the fish, very light pole, but it's great fun on this beautiful bream. Look at it coming in, look how fast I can get it in. Pole's bent double, but look at it. Skimming across the water. This is exciting fishing. The bream there, probably pound and a half, two pound, under control so easily. Safely in the net. Yeah, another lovely fish. Very strong fish, but the, the pole copes with them. No problem at all. And this is fairly light line on here. It's only two pound line. But because of the flex in the pole, it eases everything out. It smooths everything out. Only a tiny hook as well, look. Number, number 16 hook there, tiny hook. But I could pull that bream straight in because of the, the, the actual pole is so soft, it's action. All we're in again. Fabulous fishing. Another big bream. Oh, this is this is probably one of the biggest of the day. This one, beautiful golden fish. Two hands now, just to control it. This is a slightly bigger fish. But get it up to the top, look, that's important. Get it up to the top, get this head just out of the water. And then a nice smooth pull in, ready for the net. That's a tiny hook in that fish and it's over two pound. Look at the colour of it, it's beautiful. Beautiful golden, goldeny bronze. Lovely fish. We're lucky today that we've got the wind behind us, but sometimes you get a situation where you've got the wind blowing into you. And it's not, then it's not so easy to cast exactly how I've shown you. Well, you can do it, but you have to perhaps use a heavier float. There's another technique, which is an overhead cast. But you've got to be careful with it, and you've got to make sure that the pole you're using, because when you're overhead casting, it puts a tremendous strain on the pole. You've got to make sure the pole you're using can actually cope with that situation. Because you swing out with your tackle and you hold the pole different, then you hold it in two hands, you swing out, you come back with your tackle and then cast overhead. Everything goes out in a dead straight line, you force forward with this right hand pushing it over, everything goes in a dead straight line, it just takes, it takes longer to do but you, sometimes it's necessary if you're trying to cast a very light float out against the wind. 
It's impossible to do that underarm cast, and then you need this overhead flick. But you need a very, very flexible pole to do this action, because as you come back, whip forward, it, it's a tremendous strain on the pole. Everything goes in a dead straight line. It's perfectly acceptable to do it. I think it's just sometimes tends to be a little bit slower than that underarm flick. So where possible, try and get away with the underarm flick. If you've got to use a light flow, you've got strong wind against you, then you may have to use the overhead cast. But don't come back to me if you break your pole. Make sure that uh, the pole can stand it first. It's another big fish. In fact, this feels a, a really good fish. It just goes to show you what this, this tackle can do. But what, you, what you've got to remember when you're on long pole, long line, is the conditions. Sometimes the conditions are such that you can't fish this method. It may be too windy, there may not be enough flow. It's a lovely big bream, this one. Beautiful fish. So, conditions will dictate exactly whether you can use this method or not. But it, but it is a brilliant method. A brilliant method for catching a lot of fish. Remember to keep the tackle balanced. If you're using a small float, you've got to use lighter line. Bigger float, you can use heavier line and crunch the fish more. That's a lovely bream. Something like three pound. And look how easy it was handled. Much easier than on a feeder or on elastic. Lovely big bream, about three pound, but straight in. That's what happens when you're on an efficient method. But as I say, you can't use it everywhere. Some days it's good, some days you can't even use it. Right, we'll go out again and this will definitely be our last fish of the day, I think. Wind's still blowing hard, but um, it's assisting us. It's definitely assisting us. As long as you're coming back in with two and three pound bream every time, it doesn't matter. It comes in easy. It certainly goes out easy with this, just a flick. And it's out dead straight. Well, it's been a brilliant day's fishing. It, it, there's so many fish here now. Once again, it, it, it's accurate feeding. Keeping on fishing, keep feeding accurately. We've had a, a brilliant day's fishing. I've really enjoyed it. In fact, I don't want to go home. The only thing is it looks like it might be raining soon. The wind's getting up. And, uh, well, I've been in Ireland for six weeks now, so I suppose I'd better go back and do something. There's another one again. This is definitely the last fish of the day. Or would you believe it's a perch? Mind you, it's usually a sign that fishing is coming to an end when you catch one of these. A little tiny perch, about four ounces. That's definitely it. Let's have a look and see what we've caught. Well, that's the end of my holiday, but I'll certainly be back to Enniskillen. <laughs>